I'm Anne Marie Battistone. This is Norfolk Public Access. You're watching State and Local. I have Richard Staiti with me today. He's running for the Norfolk Board of Commissioners, Norfolk County Board of Commissioners. And he's going to talk a little bit about himself and what the board does and uh, why, uh, you know, why he thinks it would be a good fit for him. Thank you for coming on, Richard. Thank you for having me, Anne Marie. Pleasure meeting you that day in Norfolk. Who knew, right, when I was holding signs? That's right. I, only, I would run into some former students of mine. As I told you, I used to teach many years at Canton High School. And then I ran into, had the pleasure of making uh, your acquaintance. So, uh, small world, worked out great. Oh, really? That, that woman was a, one of your former students? Uh, her name used to be Jennifer Nyaz. I can't remember her married name now. But she is a, a Norfolk resident, and she was voting that morning. I was very excited to see me. Uh, I must oh, have given her a somebody, yeah. okay, yeah. Right, you know. So uh, I'm just saying that day, and that's the way it's been on this campaign. It's been very fascinating uh, to make reconnections, shall I say, in the opportunity that I've had to get out there because you know, because of COVID, we're limited. You really can't go door to door. Uh, you can't go the traditional way in terms of having events. So the only way to really meet people safely and with social distancing was at the elections that towns held, which I went to almost all of them, or um, uh, different events that maybe were held, you know, or we're, we're doing ourselves. We're doing standouts now, going to different towns, holding signs, um, you know, thus the reddish face. I was out there today in, in Milton holding signs. But uh, no, it's a uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Do you have any future ones planned that we can um, tell people about? Well, I've got this week mapped out, uh, and maybe not, not unfortunately, but uh, I have spent an awful lot of time, let's put it this way, I divided the county into the north and the south, uh, and Canton is, I, re I realize Canton is part of the southern part of the county, so I, I spent a lot of time in Canton and Stoughton and Sharon, I went down to Medfield, I've been down to Norfolk, Plainville, Rentham, I need to kind of get up to the north, you know, I, demographically, the north has the larger cities like Quincy and Brookline, uh, they have larger voting populace. So the next few days, you're going to be seeing, I'll be, you'll see me, but up not, I'll be up in the north. I've got a, a standout in Needham. I'm planning one in Quincy. I'm planning one in uh, Weymouth, you know, things like that. But I will circle back. We've still got time. The election is September 1, although what I was told is that the ballots are already being sent out to the clerks. And so people who mailed in applications might be seeing their ballot coming to their home pretty soon, very soon. So it's, it's great to have this show and, you know, be, be able to get it out on the air because, no, people will be voting very soon. So that, that September 1st is the, also the, uh, the de that would be the Democrat primary for the um, state rep race, too. All of them, right. Yeah. So I'm a Democrat. I am running on, the, I'm, I'm, I'm in the Democratic primary. So the, the, the contest that you might have for the representatives, the senators, the congressmen, you know, uh, whoever it might be, all those people will be up for election on September 1, including the Norfolk County Commissioners, which I'm running for. But the primary for, for, say, for state rep is in September 1st. The election is in November, right? No. Okay, so I'm not too familiar with all the races. There's a lot going on. But let's say, let's take, uh, uh, is Kennedy and Maki part of your area? Or, I mean, yes, Kennedy, that's what Kennedy? I was thinking of, yes. Yeah, so that, that, that's the race for the Senate. That's a primary. So Kennedy versus Maki right. is the primary. The winner of that right. would then go against whoever is out there on the Republican side for the in the November election. All these candidates, November. every single candidate who has a primary, like myself, right. we have to right. hopefully win this. And if we win this, then we right. still have to win the election in November. We have two elections to win. Now you said there were two openings on the Norfolk. Uh, for County uh, Board of Commissioners. Right. Are, do you have any, any opponents or yeah. yes. is anybody else running for the, for the... So let me, I'll give you a little quick one swivel lightly about it. Maybe that would help you because I maybe dodged into it differently. But um, I'm running for Norfolk County Commissioner. My, my, my background, and I'll tie it into the job, uh, I think suits pretty well. And I'm being, trying to be modest, but uh, I was a selectman in Canton for nine years. Uh, I guess you say oh. it's select, select board, but I was a member of the select yes. board or select yes. men for nine years and served chairman three years. I currently serve as a town moderator. So I'm the town moderator in the town of Canton. And in addition to oh. that, I serve on what is called, we call it the county advisory board. 
but it's interesting. When I went to sign up with the Secretary of State, they actually call it the County Board on Financial Expenditures. And it's interesting. So, and this is a funny story. So you're limited as to eight things you can put on the ballot to describe yourself. And I had it all down. I did. I had it down to former selectman, town moderator, advisory board. And they were like, nope, it's not called the advisory board. By statute, it's called the county board on financial expenditures. So I felt that was more relevant to what I'm running for. And I saw, you'll see on the ballot, it says Richard Stady. And I think I... I can't remember now if I went with former selectman and advisory board. But I put in the county in there. I did. The main thing is that that county finance board, we oversee like a finance board in the town, the spending of the county commissioners. And I've been doing it for over 20 years. So that's given me great knowledge of the county budget and the county operation. And, Isn't that and, and, voluntary that they have one or two people from each town? Yeah, every single town sends one delegate. It's usually a select board person or their delegate. Where I was a former select board member, they nominated me to fill that job. And does it have to be a Democrat and a Republican from each town? Or does no. that not matter? No, it doesn't matter. That's just, okay. I mean, there are people on the board that I serve with who are uh, Democrat. And there are people on the board who I serve with a uh, Republican. I think the representative from your town actually is a Republican. A, yes, it's a friend of mine. Yes. yes. Now ran person. She knows me. Great swimmer, too. Yeah, she's a great swimmer. Yeah. Now, very, right, right. You know who we're talking about. No, she's a very good person. Yes. Good friend. She brought a very interesting perspective, and I, I find it refreshing uh, because I think after a while, sometimes, uh, like in anything else, if you don't see things differently and you don't challenge things, you get a little stale. So she's done a good job. She does. I'm very, very happy to know her and call her a friend. That's but let me go back. So, so, what, so I want to tie in again, what is a commissioner? Many people don't even know what it is. I mean, there's four people running for these two positions. So I'm hoping to pray that I get one of the two, you know, uh, victories on primary day. The commissioner is, it's it, the most, best analogy I can give you, it's analogous to being a select board person in the town. Okay. You might have three or five in your town. Uh, and they basically maybe meet once a week or once every two weeks, and they have certain jobs, police, fire, right? Public works, water, sewer, uh, recreation. Very similar. County commissioners have uh, the responsibility, uh, and they do meet once a week, at least that, once a week. But they, they have, do. oh yeah, they have responsibility for the county roads. They have an engineering department. It's small, but they have a small engineering department. They're in charge of the maintenance of the court buildings, all the court buildings in the county. So that's Rentham Court, Stoughton Court, Quincy District Courts, all the court buildings. They're in charge also of um, the Aggie School, or they work with the trustees of the Aggie School. Um, and then also there's a, a, a golf course they have, the President's Golf Recreation, Course. Recreation, besides, besides the golf, recreation in general? Yeah. Now, well, their recreation is probably limited to the golf course, and there's like okay. a few other things there. But I mean, that's, I mean, it's, they don't have a fire department, all right? There's no fire department. But I feel, if you look at my background and check out my resume, Emory, uh, for many years, as I mentioned to you, I was a teacher, a classroom teacher. And also uh, uh, when I finished up, I was director of science and technology. So I'm the only candidate, I think, that can bring the perspective of being in the classroom to that position as being a trustee of the Aggie School. Aggie School is a good school. We can make it better. Oh, yes. And, and the Aggie school, just like all the schools because of COVID, are facing tremendous challenges, you know, in terms of how they're going to open, what they're going to do. So I think, again, having someone who's been in the classroom and as an educator, I have a master's degree in education, I think that brings something that you want in this particular position. On top of being a lawyer, I'm a member of the Norfolk Bar. I've been a selectman, so I've handled budgets. I've negotiated contracts. I'm on the county board of finance, like I said. You know, I bring, I bring a wealth of knowledge, really, and, and, and knowledge to the job. So I don't need to be trained. I have a firsthand knowledge. And I'm, I've been known to be a person who is fair, open, transparent, and I, I, I'm a collaborator. I try to bring people together. We're going to need a lot of that in the months and the years ahead with the way things are going. You know, I was friends, I, well, I am friends with, with, and you know who I'm talking about. I, I thought of his last name this morning and I can't think of it again, 
who who ran for that board. Yeah. I don't think he made it. Um, I yeah. think he was a selectman in, in Bellingham. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of his name now. But um, so I, I was a little bit familiar, but I, I remember that there was a very elderly man on that board that had been on it for decades. Is he still there? He is indeed. Um, uh, this, uh, don't want to get into age and things like that, but there were, there were veteran boards, shall I say. One of the men who serves has finally decided for health reasons not to run for re-election. So that's the, um, I'm not going to say it, but I can open seat, if you will. He was there for many, many, many years. So that's sort of an open seat. And then the other person is running for re-election. So there's one incumbent running for re-election. And then there's an open seat. Altogether, four people running for two. Now, which, which seat are you? Do you have to declare which seat you're going for? Or no, no, just... no, both have a four-year term. The way the county is set up, in the, uh, they, they have, it's, it's a four-year term. If, again, if I'm lucky enough to get elected, I'm, I'm in for four years. All right. Then the, in 2000, uh, 2022, the other commissioner would be up for election. And then in 2024, the two that get elected this year would be up for election. That's how it goes. So it goes two, one, two, one. But it's a four-year term. So, so when did you go to law school? You said you have a master's in education. Did, right. you, did you do the, the law school after that? No. So I, um, uh, when I got out of college, I think part of the best thing I did was before uh, settling into married life and having a family, I went right away and got my master's in education at Bridgewater. Now it's called Bridgewater State University. Yep. And I looked ahead, I've had that gift, I guess, to say, well, you know, it's great to have a master's, but what can I do with it? So I got, I looked at administration just in case I wanted to go that way. And son of a gun down the road, it did help me in terms of being certified because I did become director, you know, of science and technology. But along the way as well, <laughs> as the, cool. you know, as, as time we're moving on, that was at Canton High School, yes. Uh, where I'm from, I'm from Canton. Um, Along the way, I looked again because of my experience in government and I interacted a lot with lawyers and I kept thinking this would be a great little, uh, you know, nice little segue, something to take up and it just fascinated. Law always intrigued me. So I applied and I got into Suffolk University Law School and I went in the evening and it was tough. It was a challenge, but uh, I grinded through it and uh, I did a little bit of law, you know, while I was still teaching. A lot of the law I settled into and what I have done now is really zoning law. I have become a zoning, if you will, kind of a guru. I just, I'm now like, I'm, I was in Brock. Well, I just, don't, don't ask me to get you out of a jam on an assault and battery. I'm not your guy, all right? But uh, I do zoning cases. That's all I do. You do municipal law. That's right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, again, it makes sense. But it makes sense. I mean, look, I was in government. Like I said, I still am as a moderator. So it really helps to have that municipal background. Yes. And, oh, yes. Yeah. And my dad, my father, you know, uh, was a, a carpenter and then a builder. And I learned the hard way working with him an awful lot about land and real estate and working and showing development. So kind of in my blood, I kind of like it's a second nature thing. And so kind of when I got out of law school, I looked to say, what can I do? You know, what can I do in terms of using it? And I thought maybe zoning law might try it. I just did very small cases. And over time, it kind of worked itself out. It sounds out. like you have plenty to do. Why do you want to be on the on the on the Norfolk County uh, uh, Commissioner's Board? I'm driven. I drink a lot of coffee, and I like to get involved. I think you know. I think the time is now for two reasons. Number one, there was an opening. The, the person who was on there for a long time, as you noted, finally retired. So there was no. Oh, excuse seat. me. Was he reelected time after time after time? And yeah, and really, basically, no one used to run. I mean, this is the first time you've really had an, a candidate contest for this seat. So that's why I think a lot of people are saying, what is commissioner and what do you do? And because really, it's been one of those things that people just didn't step up. You know, they were more focused on state rep, state senate, you know, things like that. Um, but I see that everywhere. Like in Plymouth County, there's a battle for county commissioner. I know that. There's several people running for the two seats. So it's not like just, it's not just Jermaine to Norfolk County. It's happening. There's a lot of people that are getting involved. And you know what? That's a good thing, Anne-Marie. We need it. We need new blood. We need new people. We need new ideas. Because I think when you step back and you look what's going on, we're facing challenges. And we're going to be looking at it, not this year, but in 2021. 
the, the financial predictions in terms of uh, the ramifications from COVID are not looking too good. So I think wow. you're going to see some tough decisions are going to have to be made in 2021 on the local level, on the state level, and maybe even on the county level. So this is a time for people with experience and knowledge who have been battle tested to kind of go to work. Well, you know, uh, most of the t most of the races in Norfolk are, are unopposed, and I think people are kind of um, discouraged, and I think they feel as if they're not going to be able to make a difference, and that things are sort of all. Uh, I mean, this is just me speaking. That things are sort of sewn up within the boards, and that they won't be able to really, you know, make a difference, and. So it's, I mean, it's, it's really too bad, but most of our races are uncontested. Well, now you already had your elections, didn't you? Didn't you have the elections already? We had the selectments, but I'm talking about all the other different boards. Oh, okay. The openings, okay. And they're, they're, you know, and those are, well, those are actually voluntary. I'm sorry, you excuse me, I made a mistake. Um, yeah, those are, those are voluntary. Okay. And they, the, the openings just sort of, you know. Yeah. But there are, there are, um. There are some others that are that I believe are are uh, uncontested. In fact, in fact, um, right. The uh, oh gosh, what was it for? It was for the school committee was uncontested mm -hmm. in Norfolk. Well, if I may, uh, from my perspective, all right, I would submit respectfully. Um, I was in Plainville and I saw two people running for select board. I was in Rentham. I was there and I saw two people battling it out for select board. Um, I've been in different, and I was in Stoughton holding signs, and there were several people running for a select board. So what I did was I got out on the election days to meet people and hold signs, get my name out there, and to, you know, network. And uh, I thought people are really, are trying to get involved and run. Now, you're right. You're right. Like in my own town, for example, uh, they had to have like a write-in candidate for one of the boards. There weren't enough people that were willing to step up. So there's not a plethora, if you will, that the right word, a plethora of people to fill like library trustee or school board or even sometimes sadly planning board. But when it comes to the races in terms of select board, state rep, state senate, you're seeing people step up. I mean, even in my own town, people that are running for rep and senate are being challenged. So there's people, every race is being contested. There's a, it's like a new, renewed interest, if you will, of people that try to get some, uh, let's say, modernization to our system and some new blood and some new ideas. And uh, I think it's a good thing. I do. I do. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it, yeah. it is. I just, um, I mean, I wish there was, uh, I, I wish there were more. I wish that, when it, I interview all, I interview the candidates for, for the town and um, there weren't that many this last time. It was really just the Board of Selectmen because everything else, there was no other, there were no other contests. Yeah. You know, um, I have a, a beautiful family. I'm very proud of it. I have four boys, one girl. And when Donald Trump was elected, um, they weren't too happy. They were upset. And I basically, as a father should, I calmed them down and I said, look, you know, it's time for your generation to step up. You need to do something. Stop complaining, get involved. And if you're going to do something, you know, just get involved, do something. So I was very proud of the fact that two of them decided in their own communities to get involved on a, on a, let's say a lower level of government, but one of them helped a candidate run for like electric light board, you know, and have some communities have their own power and he helped. Oh, them, oh, okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? And another one got involved with a person who ran for city council in a different city. He didn't make it, but he got involved and I thought it was a good thing. So I mean, I think that again, it, there's, there's sort of a, almost a passing of the torch, if you will. You know, and I, I've seen it. I've seen an awful lot of younger people getting involved, and that's a great thing. But to your point, it's hard, I think, to get everybody motivated to run for every single committee. Let's face it. We're all, you know, under pressure economically, trying to maintain families and jobs. It's, it's a big commitment. It's a big commitment. You ask, why am I running? And I can tell you, basically, I'm in a point in my life, I'm very fortunate, where I have the time to give back. I do. So, you know, I have the ability to really devote my talent to this job. And you know something secretly, I'll tell you, it's something I had my eye on for many years. I've, I'm a big, oh, really? oh, I'm a big believer in county government. Well, I've been on the county board 25 years, you know, I've been on it. So I, it's not like I was going to run, but when I saw the opening and I looked at what was going on with the pandemic 
and the budget, I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in. And I'm very proud to say that, uh, you know, I needed a thousand signatures and I got in a little bit late and I got a thousand signatures the hard way. I got actually about 1500. Um, then they lowered it. They did lower it down. After I got my signatures in, they lowered it to 500, but that's okay. You know, that's okay. It was good to get out when I could. And I got a lot of people involved. A lot of people helped me out. A lot of people helped me out. So it was great. It was great. Great experience. That was the fun part. I really enjoyed going to the different caucuses and speaking and talking to the delegates. And then when the COVID hit, they shut everything down. And uh, I, it's too bad. I think uh, this is great. This is a great medium, you know, but it's not quite the same as meeting somebody and, you know, they say pressing the flesh, you know, shaking exactly. the hand. Exactly. Yeah. You know I mean? So it's a little different. And I hope I'm coming across the right way, but, you know, it's, um, it's a different kind of thing right now. Well, you know, the other thing is, I think the reason, uh, well, I'm glad to hear there are young people, you know, stepping up, but I mean, I don't know about other school systems, but in the city of Boston, they haven't taught civics. I'm going to say, well, I was there for 34 years, and I'm going to say the last 30 years I was there, I left in 06. There was no civics. They did not know about state reps. They didn't know about, I mean, they just, uh, you know, and they had nobody really at home to talk about it, you know, unless somebody happened to be work on a campaign. But, I mean, they, you know, they didn't know about writing letters to, a, a, you know, city council or the state rep or any of that. They didn't, they didn't know about counties or cities. It, it was really astonishing. But they stopped teaching civics a long time ago in Boston, which is a real disservice. Yeah. Well, um, I know in the schools in- uh, Is that the case in Canton? No, I mean, I can't speak to the curriculum. I remember I'm a science guy and it's been a while, but I mean, I think there's some level of that teaching that goes on someplace. I believe that what they do is they integrate it in different ways as well. For example, for example, I know they have an active boy state program in Canton. And to be a participate in boy state or girl state, uh, you have to fill out an application and you have to practice some speaking and go through how to oh, draft yes. a bill. You have to draft a bill and go through the practice of watching a bill get passed. So that itself is a good thing. And I know the Norfolk Bar has a program where they have a student day program and they come in and they kind of like go through the motions of a, of a bill. Oh, yes, I've heard of that. You know, so that's, that's a good thing. I mean, there's different programs that are ancillary, but as far as a curriculum, you know, I can't speak to that. They may, again, a lot of things change with the frameworks, as you know. You know, we started teaching for the framework rather than teaching, you know, with our curriculum. Now, I don't know, I heard, I heard from a friend yesterday. He told me that, um, I could be wrong, but he said because of COVID, the state had thought about or they're thinking about lowering the 185 down to 170. Did you hear that? They were going to lower it to what 170. Is, what's 185? Well, okay, you're, you're required to go 185 days of school. Oh, right? really? Yeah, well, you know, the, well, I'm well, sorry, sorry. Yes. 180. It's 180. 180, yeah. 180. But the teachers have to go five extra. So they were thinking, yes. I think they're going to lower that number of days. They're going to cut it back and they're going to give the teachers and the other professionals more time to do some training and really figure out how they're going to do their instruction with the COVID. Now, I don't want to get sidetracked on that because that, <laughs> that's not my expertise, but I think it shows something about where we are right now. Okay. And I want to bring it back to me if I may. We're dealing in education with COVID. We're dealing with the pandemic. So we now have to think things differently. Okay. In the county, and I'm running for county commission, I want to emphasize we can't do things the same old, same old. We got to do things different. And I want to do three major things. And just like my first name, Richard, just think of the three R's. All right. Number one, I want to promote more regionalization. I think we should look at opportunities to kind of group together services in terms of saving money and making it more cost effective. I'll give you one quick example. I already did it years back with the former fire chief in Canton. He worked with me and a, a small group of chiefs up in my area with Holbrook, Ray, Randolph, Avon, and Canton. And we formed a civilian regional dispatch system. And it saved oh, money okay. so that those towns were served by a civilian dispatcher rather than a firefighter. At first, the unions didn't like it, but now they've accepted it because they realize their talent is in fighting fires, not answering the phone. Their talent is in saving lives, not answering the phone. 
So you have civilian dispatchers working on a regional basis. That's one. Number two, I'm a big proponent of green. I want to see renewable energy, the use of renewable solar panels and other kind of renewable energy as much as possible does two things. It's clean, it's good for the environment, and it will indirectly save us money. It will save the county money. And number three, I hate to use it as trite, but I guess I stand for reform in that I want to make the commissioner more open and transparent. Until I talked to you, you probably didn't have really two seconds of a think about a county commissioner. I don't want to be in like in a meeting, Zoom or otherwise, once a week in Denham. I want to bring it out to the people. And if I can't do that, I will have my own separate town halls. I want to continue dialogue with people in different cities and different towns so that we collaborate and work through things together. That's what I stand for. That's what I'm about. You know, we've run out of time here. It's a little, it's a little tricky because when we're in the studio, I can, I, I have a clock here, but it's they, they, you know, they let me know in the studio. But it was, it was no it was two minutes twenty. Okay, all right. Okay. But, um, oh, something just had popped up here. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So, but thank you, Richard, and good luck to you, Richard Staiti, uh, running for Norfolk County Board of Commissioners. He's been on state and local with me. I'm Anne Marie Batterstone, and this is Norfolk Public Access. Thank you for watching.